Today's video will cover Bonk 3, Bonk's Big Adventure, also known as PC Genjin 3, as I'm using the PC Engine version for this review. Evil King Jewel III is up to his old tricks again. This time he has chained half of Moonland underwater and built his fortress above it. As usual, Bonk must come to the rescue to free Moonland. As the title implies, the defining feature is the ability for Bonk to increase his size. This is achieved by eating candies. Blue candies turn him into a supersized Bonk. At this size, he can reach platforms and items regular size Bonk cannot access, but due to his large stature, he can't fit through certain areas. While Big Bonk can climb walls, he can't grab onto branches. Bonk can also shrink into a miniature size by eating red candies. In his smaller form, he can pass through narrow tunnels to grab power-ups, smiley faces, one-ups, and other items. His jumping ability is reduced so he cannot reach some platforms. If you're hit as big or mini bonk, he will revert to his normal size. If you move away from where you picked up a candy and return to that spot, the candy will reappear. Another new addition is two-player cooperative play. This makes great use of the 8 megabits packed into this chip with having both players as supersized bonk. You can stand on top of your partner. While doing this, both players can jump to access high platforms or hard to reach items. The number of lives in co-op play is shared along with the health hearts. In the complex levels, both players must be in sync or else it's easy to leave your partner behind. When going down a chute, both players must be on the same one for it to activate. Be careful attempting to go through a tube without your partner because I noticed a bug which jumbles the direction of the two box, making progression impossible, forcing a reset of the game as you can see here. Let's go over what was carried over and changed from Bonk's Revenge. The yellow spring flowers no longer move when Bonk, but they move around in the air in some locations. The propeller makes a return and is now controlled by using just the directional pad. You can descend rapidly if you bonk while on the propeller, which is useful in some situations. The triangle wall bounce returns for this installment and the levels are laid out in a way where you'll need to use this technique more often. What's a bonk game without meat? The effects of eating meat are unchanged from Bonk's Revenge. Once again, Bonk transforms into a crab when he is flattened. He can access narrow tunnels and paths just like many bonk, and he can also attack in this form. The spin jump mechanic was improved from Bonk's Revenge. It's easier to change direction while spinning, which was a problem in the previous title. The speed in which Bonk spins is pretty much the same as the previous game. Bonk can once again repeatedly headbutt defeated enemies for additional points. This feature was not present in Bonk's Revenge. The point values received are not as high as they were in Bonk's Adventure, so I do not use this technique as much. The stages in Bonk's Big Adventure feature prehistoric and modern themes. Some stages are remixed from Bonk's Revenge like the mines and the ship. There are stages where everything is oversized like a house where all the furniture is huge. In one part of the stage you encounter a giant baby in his crib. One stage takes place in the desert where the sun rises and sets which causes the stage to alternate between light and dark. There's a stage that takes place in a city with a subway. Other stages include jungles, ice, and temples. The stages in Bonk 3 are laid out in a more complex fashion with plenty of paths and tunnels encouraging exploration. There are hidden paths that can lead to great riches. Even after completing this game numerous times, I'm sure that I have not uncovered everything. As with each of the two previous Bonk games, the final stage involves fighting the bosses a second time. Bonk 3 features enemies from the previous two titles to go along with the cast of new foes. The dragonflies, ducks, triceratops, and red beakers, the last of whom can stun Bonk when they had bought the ground, were originally in Bonk's adventure. The piranhas, bubble shooting crabs, and Bonk eating purple pterodactyls return from Bonk's revenge. Also miniaturized versions of the bosses from Bonk's revenge appear in this game. The hatchets return and have new ways to attack you. The new foes include an assortment of large animals like scorpions, butterflies, and fish, the latter of which can swallow Bonk and he must travel through its innards to escape. There are spear-wielding triceratops and an indescribable purple creature that can multiply. Beware of a green hippopotamus that can steal your smiley faces. There are bosses like mechanical turtles and crabs to go along with a large flying stone statue and a squid-like creature in a shell. 
The battle against King Drool III sees him changing sizes ranging from tiny to gigantic. Grabbing a flower takes Bonk to one of eight bonus games with events like grabbing smiley faces and fruits by traveling through a maze of tubes, bouncing along moving springs placed above one another, and spin jumping down from a high platform. There are events like destroying a building, bouncing off moving walls to reach a platform, swinging upward along branches while defeating enemies to reach the goal, maneuvering through a temple while grabbing candy to access paths and platforms to reach the goal point, and finally an event where you use the propeller to grab as many butterflies as possible. Most of these events are timed. I find the bonus games in Bonk 3 more difficult to complete than the previous two games in this series. The navigation events take trial and error to complete since they require you to take a specific path to reach the goal. The wall bouncing game requires precise timing. The smiley faces you collect in each level are now used to play any one of the 8 bonus games after a stage is completed. 16 smileys are needed to play a bonus game. You can earn up to 10 smileys back and play another game until you don't have enough to play again. This is useful in boosting your score to earn extra lives. You can quit at any time and any leftover smileys are carried over to the next stage. Big is the name of the game in Bonk 3. At 8 megabits, it was the largest turbo chip game released in the US. Having Big Bonk was a cool way to show off what their turbo graphics could do, and the Big Small Dynamic was an interesting way to navigate through each stage. The stages are big, varied, and complex to go along with plenty of obstacles and hazards to get in your way. There's a lot to uncover which helps give it replay value. I like the reunion of old enemies from the prior Bonk games mixed in with the new cast of foes. The new enemies have interesting traits. Many of them are large which doesn't slow down the action even with Big Bonk on screen. The soundtrack is solid, not the best, but I like it. The graphics are based on Bonk's Revenge, which is a good thing, but parts of some stages are simple rehashes from the previous title. Some levels have a dark color scheme, which I feel goes against the atmosphere of this series, as you can see in this comparison between Bonk's Revenge and Bonk 3. I noticed that some stage transitions make no sense. For example, in one level you're in a jungle, but then the next stage is in an ice cave. While using smileys to play the bonus games between stages is okay, I think there was a greater incentive to collect smileys in Box Revenge since the rewards were more beneficial like gaining extra hearts, the potential to earn massive bonus points, and warping. Two player co-op play was good on paper but there were issues that made it unplayable. The absence of Princess Zod was a bummer. I was hyped for this game when it first came out and I missed the chance to buy it then. I did get to play it years later on emulation and eventually bought a physical copy. Was it worth the wait to play Bonk 3? Yes. Is it a great title? On its own, yes, but is it the best game in the series? No. It's a fun game with a long quest, but I will take Bonk's Revenge as the best game in the series. If you're looking to purchase this game, buy the Japanese version since a US copy is amongst the priciest TurboGrafx games. If price is an issue, then definitely play it on emulation. I hope you enjoyed this review, and as always, thanks for watching.